Happy 2019, everybody. No better place to ring in the new year than beautiful Malibu. We're inside Firestone Fieldhouse tonight, home of the Pepperdine Waves and host to the 12-2 LMU Lions. Alongside the former UCLA Bruin, Ryan Hollins, I'm Sam Farber. It is a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us here tonight. Ryan, most of the headlines around Southern California college basketball have been about your alma mater, UCLA, yep. and a coaching <laughs> change. But the deeper you dig into the sports section, the more you hear about an LMU defense that has the Lions off to their best start in 60 years. Oh, they're play playing great. They're tough. They mix up their defenses. They'll zone you. They'll man you. You never know what's coming. Not just that, they play big. So they're having a lot of success moving the basketball playing their pace and like you brought out earlier defending offensively they lean heavily on the all-conference preseason selection James Bateman who's really led the way oh James Bateman has been special this year one thing he is is a strong point guard you're gonna see this kid in an array of positions running the pick and roll finishing at the rim and best of all getting to the foul line and he's also improved that three-point shot on the other side Pepperdine has one of the top 10 passers in the country he's currently number six in assists Colby Ross oh Colby Ross is special he's one of the more dynamic guards in in the entire country. He can score it, pass it, get his teammates involved, and once the ball, almost of all, Coach Romar said this kid has a will to win. He's something special, so we'll see tonight. We've got starting lineups and the start of West Coast Conference action in 2019 coming up in just a moment. It's the PCH rivalry, LMU and Pepperdine. West Coast. West Coast Conference basketball is brought to you in part by Geico, saving you money on car insurance, by Nike, and by Don Francisco's great tasting coffee, backed by 150 years of roasting expertise. Separating PCH rivals LMU and Pepperdine, just just over 19 miles, and what a drive it is to get from LMU and the greater LAX area to here in Malibu and Pepperdine. Sam Farber, Ryan Hollins here with you, ready for tonight's starting lineups. They're brought to you by University Credit Union Bank with your brain. For the visiting Lions, Eli Scott, James Bateman, who we talked about pregame, the preseason all-conference performer averaging 19 points per game. They got Joe Quintana, Eric Johansson, the Swede, and then the big man in the middle, another Swede, Matias Markison. He averaged a double double a year ago against Pepperdine. For the Waves, the forwards are Darnell Dunn, Cameron Edwards, J Jody Smith, and then the guards, Eric Cooper Jr., the transfer from Nevada, as well as Colby Ross, who has been an all everything performer so far this season, sixth in the country with over seven assists per game. 
head coaches for tonight's matchup here in West Coast Conference action. You've got Mike Dunlap in his fifth year at LMU, clearly off to the best start. He is one win away from 400. That's at all levels of NCAA coaching. And on the other side, a guy I know you're familiar with, Ryan, he recruited you when you were a high school player, Lorenzo Romar, back for his second stint here in Pepperdine in Malibu formerly the head coach at the University of Washington as well as St. Louis University. Ryan, your keys to tonight's contest before we get it tipped off. Pace, pace, and pace. If LMU is able to move the ball, defend, and jump things up, they're going to have a lot of success. If Pepperdine can get out and run, get some steals, and get in transition and finish at the rim, it will be a Pepperdine type of night tonight. Pepperdine waves in the white unis with the orange and blue trim. LMU in their road blues tonight. We are underway. LMU winning the tip, and James Bateman will be kick-starting the offense. The senior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who's averaged over 19 points per game. One thing you love about LMU is their ball movement. They're going to get the ball side to side. Everybody on the team is going to touch it. And most of all, as a big fella, come on, Sam. You know I love they like to get the ball inside to the big guy fella. Big guys are starting to disappear from the NBA. Everyone wants to run four or five guards out there, but they're here at LMU. Couldn't get an offensive board on their first possession. Kobe Ross driving the lane, and he'll head to the line. Sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, who talking to Coach Romar before tonight's game, said he had the heart of a former player of his, Isaiah Thomas. Oh, yes, he does. And, and those are those are some big little shoes to fill. Uh, great sign for Pepperdine, getting out in transition, uh, Kobe Ross attacking and getting to the foul line. And that's so important to get to the foul line early because instead of working your way into the game, you're aggressive and taking control, and then those outside shots will come to fall later. Two for two on the trip for Colby Ross. Battle of the guards tonight. You know, James Bateman and Colby Ross, two of the premier guards in this league. We got an offensive foul. Tough call right there. And you, and you never want to see your star point guard catching it, getting an early foul. Now if he gets one other foul, you got to sit him for the half. So take an eye on that. Let get an eye on that. LMU is one of the strongest defensive units, not just in the West Coast Conference, but in all of college basketball. Currently sixth in all the NCAA in three-point defense and top 10 in overall scoring defense, holding opponents to under 60 points per game. Got a miss there, and then an over-the-back call will go against Darnell Dunn. You see the refs are calling it side so far, so as a player, it's your job to react. So. Uh, the one thing you love about LMU zone is they're active. And you have a tendency, once they go zone, you start to relax. But they move, they fly around, and makes it so hard to get an open look against LMU. T.S. Markison, the 7-3 Swede. This is an LMU team that definitely has some size and some big guys that play a lot. Well, this is the problem. Most teams cry about not having size, and they bit, get big guys and never throw it down to them. But Coach Dunlap's going to make sure the big guy touches the ball. They love to play inside out first. Kick out the three on the way from Ross. Off the heel. Rebound poked out to Eric Johansson. One of two Swedish players on the LMU starting lineup. See, Markinson has about a six to eight inch advantage inside. So take a look. He hasn't had a touch so far. Takes a shot from the elbow off to the left and an easy board for Eric Cooper Jr. Great activity from Darnell Dunn battling with the big guy, winning the foot battle, not the arm battle, but the foot battle in the paint. Not a lot of offense so far. We've seen two free throws from Colby Ross, and that's it. Both teams shooting blanks out of the gate. Three from the corner is off the mark for Cameron Edwards. And in transition, we've got a foul. That's going to go against Edwards. Just come back for an injury. Missed nine games prior to the New Year's Eve victory over Alabama A&M. Yeah, and this is tough. You see he's got his legs back. Still a little over-anxious, but not, hasn't caught the whistle because the guards are calling it tight tonight. 
And take a look at those corner threes that Ross just took because that's going to be wide open against the LMU zone. 2 nothing. we have double the fouls to points. Not a good ratio early no, in the basketball no, not, game. I'm a defensive type of guy, <laughs> man. I love it. Come on, man. Come on, Sam. You know how I play. Eli Scott backing down, gets the shot stuffed by Edwards. Loose ball and behind the back dribble by oh. Smith the green space has his legs taken out. Johnny Smith, you're going to give me some gray hairs, young fella. Do not go around your back against the trap. Uh, Eli Scott, better known uh, as a as a bruiser, and staying down and not getting another foul. Eli Scott is a guard in the linebacker's body. Yes, he is. Three minutes in, still 2-0. See if we can open up some offense here. This three from the corner for Dunn. The offensive putback is missed by Edwards. And a travel as Marcus is tripping over one of his LMU teammates. I believe that was Smith on the baseline. If you coach Romar in the waves, you got to love the energy that his team has played with so far. They've scrapped and they've had a big question this season of 50-50 balls, and they've been very aggressive to the ball so far. Inbounds play in Quintana. Got a piece of the arm on the way up on that shot. Tromar has been raving about the improvement of Jody Smith. This is a kid that was just only known for his defense, but he's up to shooting around 40% from the three-point line and, and just really improved his overall game. Smith from Oakland. He's been on a nice spurt offensively. Double figures in four of his last five games. Makes it 3-0. We'll have a line change here for LMU. Subbing in Damian Douglas as well as Jeffrey McClendon. Another two for two trip for Pepperdine. If we didn't have free throws, we'd have no points at all. Four nothing, <laughs> Waves leading. Three minutes, 20 seconds into the contest. That's what conference play starts to look like, man. When everybody knows your plays, they know your sets, they know your tendencies. Well, we talked about pace, Sam, earlier, and the pace definitely favoring LMU, but Pepperdine getting, getting scrappy. Edwards from the wing. That's what makes Edwards special. He's got the ability with that nice frame to step out and knock down a three and get in the paint and get dirty. So 7 nothing, Pepperdine leading, despite the fact that LMU has a much stronger record. They have... Not fared well here at Firestone Fieldhouse, losing their last six on the road at Pepperdine. And you got the feeling that Coach Romar and the Waves know that. They know to, to defend home. Colby Ross hit with the foul. We'll have free throws for LMU. See if they can get on the board. Pepperdine finally broke the seal on the iron on a three-point attempt by Cameron Edwards. Yes, he did. Big, great sign for the Waves. 7-0 Waves. Woo!
last time the PCH rivals met here in Malibu, LMU almost ended their losing streak, but after a missed free throw, the ball bounced perfectly to Trey Burhow. He buries the three, and Pepperdine defeats LMU by one. And Sam, when you know you got it rolling at home, you got a streak going, sometimes you, you just can't shake it off. You, you know, things like that happen. You find ways to win or better yet, lose games here for LMU. As we see Coach Rome, and, and you, I, I can't say enough about Coach Romar, man. Talk about a stand-up individual in the game of college basketball. One of the more better known uh, for his integrity, a, a man of faith. A big fan of yours as well. We're talking to him pregame about, and he's known as a great recruiter. He had some battles for players, and he talked about recruiting you out of high school. At the time, he was at St. Louis, and while recruiting you, he got the job at Washington, and said he had to call you up with some bad news, right? Well, he called me with some good news because I wanted to stay out west, but <laughs> I, I, was, I was going for him. Foul on the lay-in attempt, and LMU finally broke into the scoring on the Damian Douglas free throw. We'll get another look. Great sign here for LMU, turning that defense into offense, a team that opportunistically runs. You're seeing Bateman getting the steal, getting all the way. And one of the keys, if Bateman, Sam, can get to the line 10-plus times tonight, LMU will be in some good shape. Sometimes seniors do what seniors do. They find ways to uh, get steals, impact games, big rebounds. They just make points. Just, I, I remember being a college senior. You just figure it out. Bateman goes one for two. So it's seven to two. We've got a strange football score going on right here on wild card weekend in the NFL. Yeah, we've got a safety and a touchdown. <laughs> The only thing that's been safe is the bottom of the net on LMU's side right now because no one's touched it really for the Lions. A couple of free throws, and that's it. Long three is off the mark and a rebound to the Lions. Tough shot right there for Kobe Ross. I believe he could get that shot anytime, but the kid knows his, his team hasn't had anything going. But you want to see the ball movement for the Waves and Coach Romar. And going back to Coach Romar's recruitment of you, he said he was telling me before the game that he called you and said, Ryan, I got some bad news, and said he was getting a new job. And you said, OK, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, was, there wasn't a question that I was going to go to uh, St. Louis without Coach Romar. You see the trap down low on Markinson. Great sign for the Waves. Edwards missed the runner. Rebound going back to LMU. Look, St. Louis is a nice place, but Malibu's got some special things, too. Got some special things, and, and originally it was Washington, but Coach Romar knew being a UCLA guy himself, if, if he was going to lose me to anywhere, it would be UCLA. Look at Cameron Everett sliding over and taking the big fella, playing the five. He's been all over the place tonight. LMU still looking for their first field goal. Good defensive stop there by Colby Ross and the Waves in transition. Ill-advised bounce pass by Smith is cut off. Great intentions for Jody Smith. Got to work on the little things. And there's a lay, and finally our first field goal tonight for LMU goes to Damian Douglas. Corner three is missed, rebounds Zafir Williams. Not exactly a shooting exhibition so far, Ryan. No, it hasn't been. Like you said, defense, but those corner threes are what's going to be wide open against that LMU zone for the Waves. Three-point lead for Pepperdine. And a fumble out of bounds by Damian Douglas. Excellent job so far of Coach Romar fronting Matias Markinson down low. The kid is 7-3. You don't see that often in college basketball, but it's really brought energy to the Pepperdine Waves. Cooper and Dunn check in for Pepperdine. Jordan Bell is in for LMU, replacing Matias Markinson. I remember watching Jordan Bell play in high school. I'm a big fan of that kid. I think he's got huge potential. He's just a smooth scorer. Corner three, Kessler Edwards misses. Kessler, the younger brother of Cameron Edwards. Still 7-4 as LMU brings it up the floor. They've been trying to pass it through a couple of waves. Tide turning back to Pepperdine. Cooper, nice pass underneath. Extra one, outside, ball for three. No. Loose ball handled by Pepperdine. 
And a great look Ross underneath to his streaking Andre Ball. Keep an eye on that Andre Ball. He easily probably could have took that thing through the legs. That kid is a big time athlete. And I'm not talking college, big time athlete, period. Cousin of his more famous cousins, the, the Ball triplets, or the not triplets, but you know what I'm talking about here. Lonzo, D'Angelo, <laughs> and Lamelo. And uh, Andre's got all the athleticism. Ross with a little look off. Uh, great job of moving the basketball. That's what Coach Romar wants. High tempo, high movement, but cutting, ball movement, slashing, three-point shooting. Ball was a, a teammate with the Ball brothers as well as Eli Scott. All five of them won a state championship. Scott nearly stole the ball from Dunn. And the one thing, Eli Scott jumping in there causing the turnovers done well. On those championship teams for Chino Hills, they just kind of cost anarchy defensively. So he's used to playing in this kind of run and jump, uh, junk it up kind of defense that LMU plays. Got another turnover here by Pepperdine. And as you mentioned, Eli Scott forcing the issue. See Coach Romar using his defense to be aggressive, limp down low. Good. Scott good. drawing the foul there on Kessler Edwards. Sorry, Ryan. Well, good patience there uh, of, of walling up. Uh, young Edwards, Kessler Edwards, little brother, was just, he's got to get a little stronger. But Eli Scott realizing he had a matchup down low and took advantage. Scott hits the first. He's a 60% free throw shooter. He's teamed up with Lonzo, Leangelo, and Lamelo. As well as Andre Ball. Well, as soon as, as I saw him, Sam, I recognized his face. I said, it's a Chino Hills kid, isn't it? The, his face was on the cover of a lot of uh, basketball, high school basketball mixtapes playing with Lonzo Ball and their brothers. So far, four of these six LMU points have been free throws. Pepperdine's been a little bit better from the field, but not much as we're eight minutes in and still in single digits for both teams. Well, that changes that. Takes it 11 to six. One thing Coach Romar has done is he's gotten out and double James Bateman, making his night hard. He's having to play against two and three bodies once attacking the rim and even getting blitzed and trapped off of pick and rolls. Eli Scott trying to throw Bateman open on the back door. Cut did not work, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Waves leading by five here at home in the PCH Cup rivalry. You trying to end a six-year losing streak here in Malibu, currently trailing by five, but they've been turning a lot of these losing streaks around here in this 2018-2019 season. You see last year heading into conference play, they were five and nine. Now they're off to their best start in over 60 years, Ryan. 
you, you really take your hat off to what Coach Mike Dunlap, the job that he's done here at LMU. Because everybody wants to get better, but nobody wants to do the dirty work. Nobody wants to do the, the little things. And I know they're down right now, 11 to 6. But this team has improved defensively. They get after you, and they talk the talk, and they walk the walk. So you really love what Mike Dunlap has done with the LMU. And you saw the reduction in points allowed, almost 20 points less allowed per game in this season as compared to last. James Bateman was saying earlier in the season that he credits a lot of the turnaround to their maturity and their dedication to defense. It's one thing to say it, it's quite another to do it, especially in an era of basketball where everything seems to be about offense. Yeah, I, I don't, how do I get these kids to buy into defense and they all want to make the NBA? <laughs> well, when you have a coach that just came out the NBA, Coach Mike Dunlap, you might get the ears of some of the kids. So great job and uh, great things ahead for LMU. Coach Dunlap, formerly of the Charlotte Bobcats. You had to stop in Charlotte, didn't you? Yeah, I was, I was drafted to Charlotte, yeah. Absolutely, beautiful city. Queen City. 11-6 right now, Pepperdine leading. LMU has only made one field goal so far in about nine plus minutes of basketball. And we raved about LMU's defense, but Pepperdine's been pretty darn good tonight. Still seem to be a lid on the rim. Finally, the follow goes. Damian Douglas has five to lead the way for the Lions, and they made it a one possession game. And that's the one cause of a concern. When I talked to Coach Romer, if there's one thing he would ask his team to do better, it's defensive rebound. But you've got to commit to that. you got to get all five bodies in the paint on each possession. Cooper Jr. missing the three and another rebound to Scott. It is one of the more glaring differences between the two teams. Pepperdine is dead last in the conference in rebounds, minus five per game. And LMU near the top at six and a half more yeah. than their opponents. So, and, and Pepperdine, although they don't rebound, that's one of their strengths, causing turnovers, using that athleticism, getting out, challenging the basketball as they cause another turnover. Substitutions in for both sides. Sam, Victor Ohia Obioha, the freshman from Nigeria. Sam, there's been a lot of emotions, a lot of turnovers, loose balls. The teams haven't settled down, so look for cleaner play going into the second half. But right now, all these emotions and jitters are still here. Both teams getting after it. I love it. Kick out, Smith for three. Gosh. I, I, I called their good couple games last year for the Waves, and Johnny Smith has improved his shot and his play so much in just this season. You love to watch that as a basketball fan. Bateman blocked, but a foul is called. Lorenzo Romar not a fan. Bateman getting to the hole again. That's what he does, Sam. And a great sign for LMU. They kind of walk you down. They're grinders. They don't mind playing at this pace. And Bateman, one of the stronger guards that you'll find in college basketball, getting to the hole and drawing contact. James Bateman to the charity stripe. He's one for two from there so far today. West Coast Conference preseason pick out of Milwaukee. While you watch West Coast Conference action, join the conversation all season long using hashtag WCC Hoops. And for the latest news, scores, and more, follow WCC Hoops on Twitter. West Coast Conference off to one of its best starts collectively. We've seen some real turnarounds in LMU and San Francisco, and they've had the upper hand against what's supposed to be the best conference in the region, the Pac-12. Well, we, we don't really need to talk about that, <laughs> Sam. You know how rough that is. But the West Coast Conference much improved. And, you know, a, a simple element for, sex de for success, defend and move the ball. Defend and move the ball. And that's what LMU does. And obviously, we know what Gonzaga does. Uh, they've been special for a while. But this is a tough conference. Obioha, nice hesitation move against the lane. Excellent pass for Kobe's, Kobe uh, Ross and Obioha, not known for his offense, but Kobe's still going to him and point to him and say, hey, big fella, I see you battling in there. I'm going to get you the basketball. Seven-point spread in favor of Pepperdine. Look at the activity of the Waves. Look at their stances. Look at the communication. Intana 
off balance runner somehow gets it to go. Quintana had been playing really well of like shooting the ball at a high clip. Cooper Jr. drains the triple. And that's Coach Romar's offense. Unfortunately, I didn't sign with him, and I played against him for four years, but he likes to get out and run and shoot those early open threes. Not the contested threes, but the right threes. Makes it an eight-point lead right now in favor of Pepperdine. It is seven and seven coming off a New Year's Eve win over Alabama A&M, which snapped the three-game slide. Obi Oha deflects the shot attempt from Matias Markison. On the run on the other side, Johnny Smith. I can't say enough about how much this young man has improved in work, and I, I just love his motor, his work ethic, and he's turned himself into a player. Timeout, LMU. Jody Smith now has seven. They start things off with the corner three, and then Jody Smith contacts, no problem. Lorenzo Romar has returned here to Pepperdine. Some footage of his first stint with the club a little over 20 plus years ago. And Coach Romar has had a great track record, Ryan, of turning programs around. Sometimes it takes a little longer than when he starts, but it's always his recruits that seem to take the clubs he's been with to the promised land. Pepperdine, he was only here three years, but quickly after he left, they made a couple of tournaments. Similar things happened in St. Louis and Washington. He was there to bear the fruits of his labor. So, Sam, you just got to rub it in, okay? Ah. And I didn't go to Washington with Romar. They didn't look too good. You he, did pretty well at UCLA, didn't you? He told me he had a five foot nine guy that could do any dunk you want to see, and another kid with some bad knees that was going to be an NBA player one day. Brandon Roy and Nate Robinson, who would have thought? And he turned them all into pros. They, they make it to a sweet 16 and elite, elite eight appearance. Um, I, I can't say enough about Coach Ronwar, and, and maybe I should have been a bigger believer, but I'm a believer now, and I bought in. Well, that's the thing about him as a recruiter, because people have been raving about him for years and his connection to guys like Markel Fultz, who went number one in the draft, but I think he got his reputation, correct me if I'm wrong, but for finding guys who other people passed on and saying, oh, this is a guy who's got talent to get to the league or get my team where it needs to go. We're rubbing in some more. Yeah, he found, he hey, was he the, found no, you. He was the first person. That's he right. was the first person. He when, I, when I was on the bench at John Muir High School, I, I got in the game, I kid you not, and I ran up and down the floor one time, and I ran back, and then I ran straight to the bench after that, and he said, he said, Coach, Coach Grant, my high school coach, he said, man, who is that Hollins kid? in the rest of history. 21-11 <laughs> here at Pepperdine. LMU a run out in Quintana, uncontested lay-in. Snaps a small run for Pepperdine, but as low scoring as this game has been, even a 5-0 spurt has been significant. One of the rare turnovers for Kobe Ross. They're really getting after him and trapping the basketball. 
Uh, one thing Kobe's got to do is trust his teammates. He's got to get off the ball. Take a chance here. Look at the activity of LMU's defense with the poke from behind. Joe Quintana with the run out. And I said earlier, he's been really scoring the ball at a high clip, playing better. And even though LMU's not up, this is LMU's pace, but Pepperdine matching the defensive intensity of LMU. Kobe Ross heading to the line. The one thing Coach Romar really loves about Kobe Ross, even after that, turn, after that turnover, Coach Romar doesn't have to get up and yell at him. Kobe Ross is madder at himself than any coach on Coach Romar's staff is going to be. And you see him correcting the mistakes, drawing a foul and getting to the foul line. So Kobe Ross is a special type of player. Two for two on the trip. He's got four points. Again, been a low scoring afternoon so far, but Pepperdine up by 10. 6.48 and counting well, Pepperdine, in the first half. They came to grind tonight, and, you know, they, they fronted the big man, Mat Matias, inside. That's really been the changing point of the game. You know, LMU not used to playing without their big fella, a team that plays inside out first. Ross getting on the floor, getting the tie up, and we got a jump ball. Sam, I'm so excited over here. I almost jumped out my seat as a basketball player. When you see guys getting on the floor, diving, getting after it, you have to get up off the bench. You love it. You see Romar's bench into it. Look at Kobe Ross making up for that mistake, diving on the floor. Extra effort plays. That's winning basketball, Sam. Kobe Ross. Unselfish point guard coming off a career best 13 assist performance. Waves running a little floppy look to a backdoor look, and they didn't have it so patiently moving through the offense now. Johnny Smith. This is the three rebound to Damian Douglas. And that's a miss that you'll leave with. Uh, you know, ran offense, got in the paint, and it got up a wide open shot. So you love the discipline of the wave so far. Bateman. I thought he got away with a travel on the kick out, a miss, but the easy putback for Douglas. We talk about the weakness that this Waves team has, that they've done a, an okay job so far of this offensive rebound, excuse me, defensive rebound. Ball in the paint, trickles out of bounds, turnover back to LMU. Really undersized with Darnell Dunn playing the, the center position. This team really leaning on him for rebounding. But it's not going to be any one man that solves the rebounding woes of the waves. All five guys have to get in there in the paint. So, as a big man, how frustrated would you be in a game like this where you're looking at a Pepperdine lineup? They've got some guys that are similar height, but not the same uh, breadth of shoulder width or anything like that, and they're not finding a way to get the ball down low. Well, Tom Matthias Markinson, I'd be frustrated. Frustrated. Big time play. Taking the charge, and we talked about Jody Smith. That's what makes him special. Obviously, he's improved on the offensive end, but this kid is an elite defender. Watch, watch him here. Take the time. Watch him here. Watch him move his feet, square up in his chest, and take it. Winning baskets. That's number two on Bateman. So the all-conference selection sits on the bench with only two points. In the first 15 minutes of play, Pepperdine leading by eight. And Sam, we talked about it earlier. You know, you get that one cheap plow and your Bateman and your team needs you, and now you got to sit the rest of the half. Smith, listening from the corner, offensive board for Cameron Edwards. The kick out. And now the turnover is Edwards was out of bounds. Waves get a couple of looks at three. Can't stretch the lead, they're stuck on eight. The Waves couldn't pay it off right there, but their effort is contagious, and, and you got to think they're going to continue having success if they can win the 50-50 balls and the energy stays where it is. See what LMU can do with James Bateman there. Catalyst on offense on the bench with two fouls. And Sam, you can always tell how ready guys are by their stances, by their attention to detail, by their communication. Look at the ways flying around the basketball right now. Quintana, and one opportunity. Big time bucket for Joe Quintana. He's been finishing at a high clip for LMU so far. And getting the tough basket. You talk about tough baskets. Kids always want to be tough. That's tough. Ripping through the, the through the double team, finishing with the and one. Big time bucket when your team needs it. 
Quintana had 11 in an 18-point win over UC Davis just before the new year began. And we got LMU great Dane Suttle in the house here. He's, he's got a couple of records. You know everybody here in Malibu, don't you, Ryan? You know what, basketball, it's a small <laughs> fraternity, man. You never know. I, just, I go in any gym in America, you're going to find somebody you know. Five-point spread right now. Wade stretching back to eight. And we talk about how good Cameron Ross is, but little brother Kester Edwards, excuse me, Edwards is going to be something special. We've been talking about this kid for a while. Edawanda, a power out there in the Inland Empire. Darren Collison, my former teammate, Ed Edawanda alumni. Eight on the shot clock, Eli Scott into the lane against a double team. Nice feed for the jam by Douglas. Beautiful play from Eli Scott. He's a big time player from Chino Hills. He's played in some big high school games in his career playing with Lonzo Ball. I believe they got the record in California for wins in a season. We got a foul. It's going to go on Quintana. You like right there the patience of Kobe Ross. Really didn't have anywhere to go with the basketball. Found a way to make something out of nothing. See Eli Harrell with the Eli Smith with the drive, dump off for the jam. LME. LMU struggling to get anything going offensively. They're struggling to keep their top players on the floor. James Bateman on the bench with a couple of fouls. Sam Farber, Ryan Hollins here with you in beautiful Malibu where Lorenzo Romar is back at the helm of the waves. And talk to him about recruiting here to Malibu in the second time around. He said the, the key word was fit. He wanted to find guys that are the right fit for this West Coast Conference potential power. Well, I, I know how Coach Romar recruits here in Malibu. You open the door, you point to the water and say, hey, can you, can you look at this for the next four years? <laughs> but uh, no, you're absolutely right. I know Coach Romar loves to run, loves to, uh, you know, plays a high tempo offense and aggressive defense. And if he gets the athletes in here, he's going to have a lot of success. And I'll tell you one thing, I expect it. This be a big win for Pepperdine. They've been 500 most of the year. There's not really a signature win to point to. And you know, when you've won on your home floor against a team six years in a row, I don't know that you can call this a signature win. But LMU's 12 and 2. This is a good ball club. No, this is a really good ball club. Three from the corner goes for Eli Scott, his first field goal of the evening. Eli Scott has been playing excellent. Uh, really just known as a banger, but the kid has shown up in a big game. And like I said, he's used to these type of games playing for Chino Hills. It's the first made three by LMU, and now we've got 
turnover and a potential injury here. Jody Smith limping up the floor, asking out. The refs had already inbound the ball, so there's nothing they can do. Let's take a look at this. Jody Smith, one of the tougher kids that we know. And he is he is wincing. He he is hurting. You know, you, you got some guys that, that they can hit, and you, and you look at them and say, I'll oh, get up, man. He's all right. And Jody Smith calls immediately uh, for a sub, one of the tougher guys that I said, that especially uh, for the Waves and in this entire conference. So when he's screaming for a sub, looks like he, he took a little hit pointer uh, either on the back of the knee or the or the uh, hips. Uh, you got to take attention to it. We'll, so we could keep an eye on that and see if he gets back in the game tonight. Scott lost the handle underneath. Falls to Quintana though. Six on the shot clock. Well, he's got to hurry. Quintana off balance three. Rebound goes to Pepperdine. If I told you that James Bateman and Matthias, Matthias, Matthias Markinson would be on the bench and at the 152 mark going into the half, Pepperdine would only be up five, would you Would you have to say to me, Sam? Would you, would you believe that, man? Say so Coach Dunlap was, uh, I don't know about satisfied, but <laughs> he'll take it. Oh, yes, he will. They have not played well. You know, Bateman hasn't gotten going. Matthias, I, I think he got fouled on a, on a on an attempt that wasn't called, but you know, Coach Romar fronting him has really sped up the big fella and bothered him. Ross earned a tie up and now out of bounds. Last touch by Pepperdine. LMU is not a high scoring basketball club. They average 71 points per game, which is dead last inside the West Coast Conference. But this is a poor performance for them. They are not shooting the ball well and they don't look all that great in their offensive sets well they don't pride themselves on it but surprisingly you know pepperdine is grinding right along with lmu tonight douglas fading away hits with two on the shot clock douglas has been excellent tonight letting the game come to him opportunistically getting on the boards and then knocking down the dagger he's the first man into double figures with 11 the freshman from hanford now a rebound for Douglas with one minute left here in the first half. LMU's got a chance to tie with a three. You feel the energy and confidence just building of LMU. You know, things haven't gone their way, but they're grinding out. These are some tough kids. Quintana working against a double team. To Scott stuck on the baseline, deflected to Johansson. Two on the shot clock. Scott turns and missed everything. And we'll have a shot clock violation. Turns it over to Pepperdine. At least they had better ball movement that time, Ryan. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. And in college, it used to be a, a 35 win. And at UCLA, we used to milk all 35 of the, the shot clock. And you think LMU plays slow, but you're going to see the Waves try to get the last shot here. Not really a two for one type of situation. Got Daryl Polk Jr. in, a freshman from Long Beach Poly, who run point. Done, open for three. Smooth stroke from your center. Keep in mind that's your center knocking down threes for Coach Lorenzo Romar. Shot clock goes dark. LMU is going to trail heading into the locker room, but by how much? Blended, stuck. Shot at the buzzer. Bounce oh. in. How about that? Zafir Williams with the bailout. <laughs> well, Pepperdine certainly the stronger performance there in the first half, but LMU they kept themselves within striking distance, Ryan. Yes, they have. They grind it along. They continue to work, and you, you ask for the offense, and they've closed out with a bang. Zafir Williams with the throw in. Woo -hoo -hoo. Bails him out just before the break. Lions down by four. Halftime next from Malibu.
Halftime here at Firestone Fieldhouse between the home team, the Pepperdine Waves, and the visiting LMU Lions, their West Coast Conference opener. And fans, if you love the WCC as much as we do, or you're just looking for an excuse to make a trip to Vegas, it's not too late to join us for the 2019 West Coast Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. The WCC returns to the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas March 7th through the 12th. We hope to see you there. Visit WCCSports.com for complete event and ticket information. We'll step aside for just a quick moment, but come back with a deeper dive into the conference. How good is Gonzaga? How deep is the field? Ryan and I will break it down when we return. Pepperdine leading LMU 31 to 27 in this PCH Cup rivalry game. Two schools separated by that highway, the PCH, just 19 miles apart. Well, the West Coast Conference has had a great start to this basketball season. The big headliner year after year is Gonzaga, and the East Coast bias would say that those inflated NCAA stats are because you're beating up on weaker competition. But you know what? Gonzaga put those kind of numbers up against Duke. They can play with anyone. Yeah, they did. They gave. Duke one of their few losses but handled them you know the, the one thing I and I actually had an opportunity to play for Mark few in the Pan American games uh, representing the United States of America but they're just so disciplined and Mark few he, he's really the coach K of the West Coast if you think about the tenure he's just had up there at Gonzaga and the stranglehold he's had on the conference and not just Gonzaga having a dominant non-conference schedule but the entire West Coast Conference nine of the ten teams have a 500 or better record and they Got a winning record collectively against the Pac-12. Sorry, well, Ryan. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to rub it in, <laughs> rub it in. Uh, but one of the goals of the West Coast Conference was to not just have the winner get in, because you assume that's going to be Gonzaga year in and year out. But you got Loyola Marymount at 12-2, and two, San Francisco 12-2, and two, and San Diego 11-4. And, and they're for real this year. 
uh, and taking care of business out of conference, you have a chance to get one of those at-large bids, Sam. So that's what you really aim for. So, you know, whether it's San Francisco, San Diego, Loyola, or Pepperdine stepping up, you may have an opportunity this year. And that was actually the frustration for the conference, specifically St. Mary's. They'd have a record of 28 and 4. They'd have two losses in conference. They both beat a Gonzaga, and somehow they would miss the mark. But this year, as you mentioned, LMU is better. San Francisco is better. There is not a, a bottom of this conference that you can really think you can feast on, which is going to allow for some of those second, third place teams to make it at least a competitive shot at getting multiple bids. We look at these records. Entering conference play, five teams with double-digit wins. It's been a little while since that's happened. Oh, yeah. No, it's thick. And, you know, the West Coast Conference is on the rise. So the WCC looking good heading into conference play. These two LA rivals are trying to figure out who's going to start WCC action 1 and 0. We'll break down the first half between LMU and Pepperdine next. Welcome back to Malibu, where Pepperdine leads LMU 31 to 27, and our cameraman, rightfully so, fight for the right to take the pregame scenic shots. It's pretty nice out there. Sam Farber, Ryan Hollins here with you <laughs> inside Firestone Fieldhouse. Ryan, if I had told you before the game that the two top scorers, Markison and Bateman, would combine for two points in the first half, but LMU would be within five, you would think? Uh, you're crazy. Eh? There's, there's no way, but they've gotten it done tonight with the defense. Uh, they've been tough. They've scrapped. Uh, they've done all the little things, and you, you talk about the true fabric of a Jeff Dunlap team. Now, this team does get some scoring somewhere to keep within four, and they've gone to some uh, less common sources. Damian Douglas, 11 points, the only man in double figures well, in the first half. Love from Damian Douglas tonight is the ball has found his energy. He just hung around the rim. He's back cut, and you see him knocking down a nice little fadeaway coming up here and slicing to the basket right behind the double team for the big-time jam. For Pepperdine, Jody Smith is coming off a career-high 19-point performance in the win over Alabama A&M. 
activities and kept you going here today. And Johnny Smith, a, a much improved player. You know, his defense is always going to be there, but he's worked his tail off in the offseason to improve his three point shooting. And the kid has been absolutely fearless attacking the basket. Now, you question the second half, he got that hit pointer. Is he going to be able to finish? But you see that nice finish up off the glass. LMU actually shooting a higher percentage. That's due in part to the fact that they have out rebounded Pepperdine, something we're used to seeing. But the Waves perfect from the charity stripe. They've been able to maintain an advantage throughout the contest. Yeah, and if the Waves can keep it up, you would think that they have an opportunity to take home care of home and keep the streak going. And they've, they've really had a stranglehold on the season, as you brought out earlier, Sam. So I'm looking to see the Waves to see if they can keep up the intensity because they have met LMU pound per pound on the defensive end tonight. LMU's last win in Malibu was 2012. Can they end the drought or will the Waves keep rolling into West Coast Conference action? Rolling. Second half is next. West Coast Conference basketball is brought to you in part by University Credit Union. Bank with your brain. Visit us at ucu.org. And by the W.TV. All the action anytime, anywhere. Lorenzo Romar's got the Pepperdine Waves up by four on their home floor here at Firestone Fieldhouse. Sam Farmer, Ryan Hollins, happy to have you along with us for this West Coast Conference opener, an all-important one. Waves trying to start conference play under this second term with Coach Romar on the right note, and LMU trying to prove their 12-2 record is for real as they get into the meat of conference play. If you're Coach Romar, you want to take care of home, and more importantly, you do that with Colby Ross getting going down the stretch. He hasn't been impressive so far, but getting to the foul line, so you want to see Colby Ross have a better night. And if you are Coach Dunlap, you're going to look for James Bateman to stay in the game, stay out of foul trouble, get to the hole, lead his team, and you need something tonight out of the big fella. Matthias Markinson is such an important part of this LMU team, and he's struggling with the front so far tonight, so we'll see if he can't find ways to be effective. Bateman and Markinson in the first 
half combined to go 0 for 4 and score two points. They averaged 30 per game combined. Bank shot missed on the opening possession for LMU and deflection is last touched by Matias Markison. You got to credit Darnell Dunn tonight. You know, he hasn't really been scoring outside of that three-pointer that he knocked down, but he's won the foot battle in the paint against Markinson. Colby Ross, quiet start to his conference slate as well, only six points. Nice feed underneath, and Cameron Edwards will head to the line. Nice pass. I think Ross was looking for the lob to Edwards. Edwards just getting back on the court, so he decided to come down and make the smart play. You watch the little split right there. Normally, that'd be a lob dunk for Edwards, but playing it safe. Edwards has been so injury prone over his career. 2017, he missed the season with a fractured jaw, missed nine games due to a concussion last year. He's missed nine games already this year, but when he's healthy and out there, he is very effective. And Edwards, a, a kid who's going to have a, a definite shot at playing professional, you see his, his frame and length, uh, shooting ability, and he's got some toughness at the paint as he misses two tough free throws. Very uncharacteristic of Edwards. Still a four-point game. Scott backing down, and a lefty lay and goes. Scott's been excellent tonight, just using his body and patience. A kid who's played in some big games. Played alongside the Ball brothers. Maybe I'll just say Lonzo Ball. I don't, want to, I don't know if I can credit the other ones the same. I'll say Lonzo Ball, but nonetheless, they were all part of that team. What do you think, lamelo has got a shot? Uh, lamelo has got to play some real basketball to me. He has too much nonsense in the game, I'll be honest, but he's an incredible talent. Lamelo Ball or Andre Ball? Andre Ball is definitely the better athlete. Athlete. Tough play right here. The Waves stepping in to take the tough play, but Scott has been relentless tonight, attacking the basket, and Darnell Dunn in the tough one, not being rewarded for the charge attempt. It's his second personal and puts Scott at the line. Eli pretty good on his own, not just with the Ball Brothers. He set the LMU freshman rebounding record 225 a season ago. It's Got ourselves a one-point game right now. And if we had individual workouts, Eli Scott wouldn't wow any of you, not with his shooting or athleticism, but you turn the game on, you turn the lights on, and the kid finds a way to get it done. Just a gamer. Rosslein looking for the basketball and a turnover back to LMU as we got a tie game and momentum swinging to the Lions. LMU, we talked about, Sam, just comfortable at this pace. Ugly games, they grind you out, they move the ball, they defend, they do the little things. Bateman missed the corner three. Markison gets the offensive board. Kitana for the lead. Oh, talk of weight. Smith dodging one, Sam, right? Done. Blocked by Markison. Big fella hasn't been scoring, but he's making his impact known on the rebounding and screens and blocking shots down there. Markinson. Averaged a double-double last year in two meetings with the Waves. But very quiet tonight. Well, Coach Romar has done a good job of just swarming the big fella in the paint. They've got his respect. Great move by Bateman to open up the space. His first field goal tonight normally, the Lions lead. You normally wouldn't see that type of cheer, but LMU knows if Bateman gets going, they have a great shot to win. Now Quintana the steal and the rejection on the other side. Darnell Dunn. Cooper hits the three. Huge answer for Cooper. Eric Cooper, the shooter, knocked a few down already. We got a ball game, Sam. Waves back up by one. Five on the shot clock. Three on the way. Yes! <laughs> Eli Scott. Big time players make big time plays, and Eli Scott doesn't know any different. 
Second lion into double figures as he hits his second three. 36-34, LMU on top. Edwards fakes the pass, the floater is short. Good verticality by Matthias Markinson, and verticality means he's not, oh, tough play. Spill and no whistles. Edwards into the lane, leaves it, and a foul here on Scott. Great selfless play. You see Edwards to Ross and dropping off to Cooper. On the earlier defensive action, we got our defensive play of the game brought to you by Geico. One 15-minute call can save you 50% or more on car insurance. Done with the rejection. Darno has been great tonight, you know, battling with Matthias, Matias down low, winning the foot fight, scrapping around the rim. Uh, he's given up a rebound or two, if that, but uh, comparative to the other losses this season for the Waves, he's given his team a chance to win by battling. You and the NBA you know, went up against some guys that were a little bigger than you. What is the key to matching up with someone who's got a size advantage and doing what you can to negate it? Well, you, you don't fight with them up top, Sam, and, and you, you keep active feet. You keep It's almost like you throw an array of punches. You keep jabbing. You keep jabbing. You don't want to stand there and throw the haymakers, and, and Dunn has done a great job of winning that foot battle with Mat Matias Markinson. Four minutes into the second half, we're tied at 36. Bateman on the bench right now for LMU. And we got a foul on the rebound, it looks like, against Pepperdine. Damian Douglas has been flying around all night tonight, Sam. So. Well, the Lions have had a couple of these possessions where the first 25 seconds looks terrible, and then the ball finds the shooter, like Eli Scott in the corner. We're tied here at 36. Even at 36 here at Pepperdine, the fans dancing as we're getting into conference action at long last. The W.TV is your home for West Coast conference action all season long, featuring over 65 live WCC men's basketball games. Visit the W.TV from your browser, smartphone, tablet, or connected TV to watch live out-of-market games for free. The W.TV, all the action anytime, anywhere. Sam Farber, Ryan Hollins here with you. A tie game at 36. LMU trailed the majority of the first half, Ryan, but even though Mateus Markison has not been the guy getting those interior touches, they have outscored Pepperdine by a significant margin. 18 to 8 in the paint. Is, is that enough, even if it's not your center scoring? Well, Scott Douglas have been excellent. You know, they picked up that scoring load, and this is a LMU type of place. And, you know, Coach Mike Dunlap has done a great job of just adjusting. You know, this is a, t he's a tough group of kids. See Joe Quintana with the split. Uh, you appreciate that even though James Bateman hasn't gotten going, Quintana has been aggressive and he stepped it up for the much needed minutes tonight. Substitution 
brings James Bateman back into the game, the preseason all-conference selection for LMU, who's been limited to just four points so far. Yeah, Bateman's getting, been getting trapped everywhere he goes. He's seen two and three bodies uh, between them. Quintana opens some space, but can't hit the three. Foul on the rebound. It's going to go against so Kessler Edwards. I tell you, Damian Douglas, his activity tonight has been infectious to this group and a large part of why LMU's in the game. Really a, a selfless player, you know. They haven't run one play tonight for Damian Douglas. I mean, maybe that backdoor, uh, that back, you know, backdoor play on the ATO underneath. Uh, but other than that, this kid has found the basketball himself just by working hard, cutting and staying with it. Scott forced to call a timeout. Waves didn't even have to trap him, but the smothering defense from Colby Ross forces LMU to burn the timeout. 15-16 left to go. We're all even at 36 between LMU and Pepperdine. Tied at 36 here in the second half. LMU with a 12 and 2 start to the season. Not just giving him one of the best records in the West Coast Conference, but giving him one of the best RPIs in the greater LA area. Right on the heels of your alma mater, UCLA. Yeah, yeah they are. You, you, you know what, Sam? You've been rubbing things in all night, man. You've been rubbing things <laughs> UCLA in. UCLA is ahead on the graphic. Yeah, right we're ahead. We're ahead. You know what? Loyola has a fine team, and, and you're watching the defensive efforts and extra efforts and, and guys stepping up who normally don't have the basketball in their hands tonight. So uh, you see why this LMU team is tough. LMU's 12-2 and two includes a win over Georgetown. So they're... they're are certainly some questions as to some of the other teams they've beaten, but you got a W over Georgetown on your on your ledger already. That's something you can point to come committee time if there's a discussion and say, you know what, we, we've proven it against some big teams. You absolutely can, and you love the defense of Kessler Edwards. You know, matching uh, freshman on freshman crime right there as Scott knocks down the J ball. Where's this been? <laughs> Is this James Bateman's team or, or, or Eli Scott's? Come, Sam, help me out. He's got a dozen. Leads all Lions. The Lions lead the game 38-36. Floater goes. Cameron Edwards has five. Keep in mind that Cameron Everett just got back in the lineup and Coach Romar talked about how, how important and integral he was to everything that they planned on doing this season. So now he can just run the offense and rotations that he originally planned on with Cameron Ross finally getting back. Tied up at 38. Great job right there, Colby Ross winning the foot battle, not letting Bateman get in the post, get in post position. Edwards clears the glass and Pepperdine wants to run. 
Cooper, transition three. Yes! Coach Romar could not speak enough about Eric Cooper's shot, and this kid was a shooter. And, and Pepperdine's needed every single one. Sam, the LMU ball, but here's that three again. Sam, look right there. Look at Cooper. His feet fair, almost towing the out of bounds line. Sweet shot. He doesn't even see the defender. Nothing but net. Sam, when you take a 7 3, a guy off the floor, these teams are very evenly matched. Great matchup. Bateman with six on the shot clock. Off the heel, the rebound goes to the Waves. Bateman's really struggled tonight. The Pepperdine Waves doing a good job of keeping bodies between this. And we thought this would be a battle of point guards, but it's uh, uh, been the defense. It's been Eli Scott. It's been Cameron Edwards. It's been, a you know, everyone else in two signs of two really, really good teams. Yeah. Bailout foul there as Colby Ross seemed to be falling already, but they hit James Bateman with his third. Bring back on the 7-3 Swede. That's my big fella. You want Marcuson to get the ball? Oh, of course. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm big man bias all day. Cooper draws the foul on the pass. It's going to go against Damian Douglas. Saw Coach Romar ran a little special to get Cooper the shot. Edwards with the quick pin down. And good job of Eric Cooper just, you know, drawing a foul there. But, you know, tell the ref I'm shooting it. You know, play it off. Colby Ross has been quiet tonight, only six points. And one of the, another foul. One of the real emphasis of LMU is keeping bodies, pressuring the basketball and keeping bodies between the basketball and the paint. You see Ma Ma Matias Markinson, even though the points haven't been there, he's been a factor in the key. That was the third foul of this possession. Well, you, you complain about how tight it was. So <laughs> you, 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 you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> Smith misses from close range. The rebound to your guy, Marcus. There he goes, man. Big fellas impacting the game. And Tyler walks. It, it hasn't been pretty. But the kids have played hard. They've gotten after it. They competed. I, I, I love the extra effort. Two of the better coach teams in the conferences. You got Mike Dunlap and Lorenzo Romar in the West Coast Conference. God. I told Coach Romar how jealous I am watching this game. Long, I never got to play for a big time three from Johnny Smith. Second triple of the game for him. He's the second wave player to reach double digits. Something told me he wouldn't be done after that little hit pointer. 44-38, Pepperdine leading. We're approaching the 12 minute mark. Cameron Edwards smothering the big fella and, and that's not where you want to see Matias Markinson is, you know, 27 feet away from the basket. Quintana's contested three well short. Talk Douglas about. couldn't hit the iron in a turnover. Sorry, Sam, but talk about a coaching clip. A coaching clip is where you play perfect defense. If you're Coach Romar, you're excited the way that your team is aggressive, getting after it, and buying in on the defensive end of the floor. Ross, nice backdoor feed. Easy lay in. Kessler Edwards. When you talk about Kobe Ross, you talk about a will to win, and tonight his points haven't been there. But he's done an excellent job of just sharing the basketball, moving it around the horn. Pepperdine stretching the lead out to eight. Jody Smith with the three, and then one of the nation's best passers, Colby Ross, gets an assist.
Pepperdine leading LMU by eight at home in the West Coast Conference opener. Fans watch live games, get scores, stats, news, and more by downloading the free West Coast Conference app today from iTunes or Google Play. The all-new WCC app now available for Apple and Android tablets and smartphones. Sam Farber, Ryan Hollins here with you. Taking in the performance by Colby Ross. He is 0 for 5 from the field, but six points, 10 assists. He is making an impact despite a tough shooting night. Well, ask Coach Romar what type of kid is he? Is he a shooter? Is he a scorer? How does he get himself into the game? Coach Romar said Colby Ross will do anything it takes to win, and tonight it's been sharing the basketball to his teammates. Heard of hot shooters. I'd imagine you could be a hot passer, too. He had a career best 13 assists on New Year's Eve against Alabama A&M. He's approaching that right now with 10. Well, Kobe Ross is special because most guys feel like they're not doing anything if they're not scoring. But Kobe Ross understands if he defends and he shares the basketball, he's doing his job, making sure that the plays are run the white ray, getting guys in positions. That's what a real point guard does. Marcuson gets a hand in the passing lane. It'll be Pepperdine ball on the baseline with 10 on the shot look clock. At, look at Kobe Ross bringing his guys in. Talk about leadership. Those are little elements of success, a successful season, and that's why Pepperdine is having the success they have tonight. Great look underneath to Dunn, and Dunn will head to the line. That's all Kobe Ross. <laughs> that is all Kobe Ross. He made sure the team executed earlier, drives the baseline, couldn't get the play, brings the guys in for an ATL, and they catch LMU asleep as he gets the pass to Dunn. Big time basketball, Kobe Ross doing the little things. Look, Coach Romar, you know, it's it's a tight game, and he's, he's sitting down, cool, calm, and collected. You know, Kobe Ross has it. Dunn, I need you to make a free throw, but, you know, Kobe Ross, you got it. Trust my guys. Line change for LMU. They bring in Williams, Johansson, and Quintana. Well, that's what Mike Dunlop has done. He'll play his deep, he, deep. You know, he plays the entire bench. You, you practice hard, you play hard, you get an opportunity. Dunn goes one for two. It's an 11-0 run right now for Pepperdine. LMU's been scoreless for about four minutes. That's how you take care of home. You do the little things. You keep trusting in the offense. Ball movement. Sharing the sugar. It's Kobe Ross. Quintana. Goodness. Nearly lost it against the oh, double team. Oh, gosh. Pepperdine's defense has been special tonight. Quintana. Balance three and a shot clock violation. Look at the Pepperdine pitch. They bought in. You see a group that's bought in, loving the defense, the effort, finishing with the, it couldn't even be a rebound because they forced the air ball. Oh, goodness. Big time basketball. Kobe Ross taking it over the game. Is this assist number 11? Mmm. Oh, gosh. Johnny Smith. You're going to hear me say this over and over again. The ball will find your energy if you play the right way and you believe. Kobe Ross making an impact, taking care of home. Largest so lead of the game for Pepperdine. Somebody knows the track record here with LMU Pepperdine at home. Bateman falling away. No, Marcus in. Oh, slam. it down, big fella. Throw it down. <laughs> Watch your head. Oh, come on, big fella. Little, little, little brother, little brother. Swing the ball a little quicker. Ross, mm. pass deflected, still found its way home. Now a kick out, a double bounce pass to Ross. Oh, yes. gosh. <laughs> Kobe Ross is one of a kind, man. That's a coach's dream. He must be thinking, finally, a field goal. Now Marcus, oh. another tip for him. <laughs> I seem a little excited for my big guy, man. Big man bias. Big man bias over here. Watch your head. Under nine to play. Marcuson back to back dunks. I, I'm impressed that he doesn't have to bring the ball back down. There, there are not too many pros that can do that. Smith, a little too fancy. Johnny, Johnny Smith, a little too excited there. <laughs> They're getting after it. We, we got a good game. We're, we're, we're over here spoiled, Sam. Hanging out in Malibu, watching a good basketball game. Oh, yeah, man. 
Nice yeah. move there by Williams. Opportunistic bucket by Zafir Williams. We're known for his defense and rebounding, but nice little bait hook bucket. Sophomore out of Long Beach Poly makes it an eight point game now. Pepperdine still leading. LMU challenging. Cooper. Yes. Joe <laughs> Fromar have bragged and bragged about how hot that Eric Cooper Jr. can get. And <laughs> we're seeing it tonight. Shooter. Thousand point scorer overall between his time at Nevada. And here at Pepperdine, he's hit four threes today. Foul goes on Smith, and I'll take us to a timeout on the floor. Pepperdine starting to heat up from distance, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Johnny Smith from way downtown. Bang! See my man, Eric Cooper? He's still hot. Jumper waves up 55-44. Colby Ross, the conference's best passer at over seven assists per game. He's got 10 already tonight. Colby Ross has been excellent tonight at just sharing the ball, making game-winning plays. Coach Romar, please forgive me. You told me all the kid wants to do is win. I didn't believe you, but tonight all he's done is made winning basketball plays, sharing the ball around the horn, opportunistically knocking down buckets. You talk about a special kid. This Colby Ross here is something special. Coach Romar talked about his competitive nature, compared him to Isaiah Thomas, a guy he had at Washington who was overlooked by a lot of the other big teams around there, but given a shot, he did everything he could with it. A similar story for Ross, grew up in the Pac-12 footprint in Colorado, two-time state player of the year, under-recruited, and he has been lighting it up here in Malibu. I never understood why Isaiah Thomas was drafted so low, another excellent Coach's clip type of possession from the Pepperdine Wave. Look at Romar's off the bench now, man. Romar finally got off the bench. They're feeling it tonight. But it's been the defense. It's been a grind, Sam. You got to love this. I'm sorry. I, I just love the little things, Sam. And you're watching great basketball for the Pepperdine Waves tonight. Full court pressure now from LMU. Think this, you think this Mike Dunlap team is going to go away silently into the eight? No, they're no. going to compete, right? Nice oh, feed. gosh. Done. We'll go to the line. You talk about clinics. What are clinics? Clinics are exactly the element between where the coach teaches and the players listen, and you see the execution coming through on court. Penetration to the drive, shot fake. Gets the big fella in the air. Now, Darnell Dunn's missed some free throws, needs to knock these down, but you could not ask for more out of a possession. Dunn misses the first. Come That's on, why you watch West Coast Conference action. Join the conversation all season long by using hashtag WCC Hoops for the latest news scores and more. Follow WCC Hoops on Twitter. 
one for two trip for Dunn. I follow WCC Hoops on Twitter. Me too. <laughs> Great follow. Seen some pretty good uh, dunk highlights, particularly from Pepperdine. One of their guys, Andre Ball, had one earlier this year at Oregon State. That one got a few retweets. Andre Ball is a athlete. Athlete. You hear me? Here he comes. No, no, no. Oh, that's, not that. that's Sorry. Little, that's little brother. That's, that's little brother. <laughs> that's little brother over there, man. Edwards coming in. And, it, you know, Pepperdine have been talking about Kessler Edsler, Edwards for a while. You know, Cameron's good, but, you know, Kessler has an opportunity to actually be better. He's taller than, than Big Brother and has more length. And Cameron Edwards ain't no slouch. He's a big-time player. Quintana for three. Off the heel, Bateman gets the board. I keep the corner. McClendon. I, I keep Gosh. One of the struggles for the Waves is offensive rebounding. Now they almost give one up there. But Zafir Williams just couldn't get his hand on the basketball. Big break for the Waves. You know, when I watch Kobe Ross play, I don't think he makes a mistake. I feel like the kid makes the right play every time down the floor. Break the pressure and oh. get the lay in for Don. Oh, gosh. Talk about execution, being tough with the basketball. Kobe Ross pivoting and finding guys out the trap. 14 point lead for Pepperdine. Gosh, look at Kessler's limp. Arkison around and out. Six minutes left, and Pepperdine can push the lead above 15 with a bucket here. They're feeling it, Sam. They're feeling it. <laughs> yes, they are. Romar, Coach Romar has that look in his face where he's excited. He, he wants to say something, but he's not, not quite sure. Letting his guys play, feeling the moment. Colby Ross putting on a clinic. Johnny Smith knocking down the big time three, taking care of home. Pepperdine waves up 61 44. I mean, I mean, goodness, you, you, you couldn't ask for more. Uh, because the team better known for their offense, Sam. They have defended, and the offense has come around late, but nonetheless, it's there. This could be the dagger here. This three from Smith forcing the timeout. It's his third three of the contest. Last season, the kid shot a little under 20% from three. Shooting over 40% from three. I cannot rave enough about the improvements in Jody Smith's game. The kid has turned himself into a player. You've never questioned his effort. You've never questioned his hustle. And now his offense comes along. Big time minutes for Jody Smith and Kobe Ross. It wasn't pretty earlier, Sam. It was not pretty, but the kid kept crying and kept working, kept believing, kept sharing the basketball, and great things are coming along. And Pepperdine's almost up 20 points against a team that's 12-2. and two. This would be a significant win to be sure for the Waves. They, they're 500 coming out of non-conference action. Well, there was a real fear when a guy seven foot three with great hands and a great hook comes into your gym and you don't have anything to match him. But they fronted him, they run the, the, the foot fight, Darnell Dunn, and they have had a lot of success. And James Bateman hasn't seen one defender tonight. He's seen two, he's seen three every single time. Colby Ross has struggled at times for his shot, but tonight's moment of the game presented by Don Francisco's Coffee. High quality, great tasting coffee backed by 150 years of coffee roasting expertise was his first three. He finally got it going. A night where he had 10 assists, but when you're the team's leading scorer, sometimes you just need to see the ball go through the basket once for things to explode for everyone else. I, I, I can't help but keep telling you how special that is because it's a rare quality that a kid can defend, can pass, can pass up shots, and you get a heavily contested three, and you knock it down because you want to win. You want to win that bad. That's not normal. Kobe Ross is not normal. 
talk about a superstar. He's the first Pepperdine Wave since 2000 to have back-to-back -back games of 10 or more assists. He's a sophomore? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. West Coast Conference, watch out. <laughs> sophomore Sam, am I reading that right? That's correct. Oh, goodness. Two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in Colorado. I see why. Super sophomore. Back to action, oh. Scott the reverse. Late it goes, plus the foul. Scott's been excellent tonight. Not known for his, his defense, but he loves big games. Loves to play in a bit of a helter-skelter type of system. Loves the chaos. You'll see Scott here, patience, driving baseline, using that big frame against Darnell Dunn and finishing with the with the oop de do here. oop de do under the rim. Missed the free throw, but an offensive board for LMU. Couldn't pay it off. And then a foul is going to go against Jody Smith. Good hustle for Everett Parrott. Hadn't played a bunch of minutes tonight, but still doing the little things, crashing in for a much-needed rebound. That's one of the big no-nos. That, that's something you show on film if you're Coach Romar tomorrow, and you don't give up offensive rebounds off of free throws. Those are the second possessions you never get. Give, and it, apparently he's from my hometown. I, I didn't know that. He's, he's a Pasadena kid. He's so whoop. East Side High School. I don't know where he's from. I don't know where he went. I don't think. I don't know. I don't think he's a mere kid. But he's, he's a, not he's a mere a kid. He's a Pasadena kid. He nearly gets the steal on the inbound after a lane violation. Gated the free throw attempt. No look pass down low, but a rejection by Scott. No quit from LMU. Something excellent for the Waves tonight. They've won the 50-50 battle. Maybe they're getting beat on the boards, but the 50-50 battle has been there for the Waves. There it goes. The board for Cooper. They'll pull it out with five minutes left in a 15-point Pepperdine lead. Tonight, out hustling one of the better teams in the conference at, at, at doing the little things. The Waves continue to fight, continue to match pound for pound one of the tougher teams, I'm going to say it again, the tougher teams in the West Coast Conference, LMU. Jordan Bell is checked back in for LMU, replacing Damian Douglas. I'm telling you, Jordan Bell is a big-time player. Once he gets his feet set in, in, in college basketball, and he, he's a big-time scorer. He's gotten length. He's got better feet than you would expect. He's got a chance to be something special. Quintana collects the rebound off the missed three. LMU's going to have to start putting some possessions together here. Bateman loses the handle, and it's turned over to Pepperdine. Bateman, a frustration foul on Ross coming up the floor. Oh, he, he was. Uh, they're in the bonus now, and Kobe Ross is not giving you that poke away from behind. You see the, the tight little pat-pat dribble uh, as he drove around Bateman. And the difference between Kobe Ross and Bateman tonight, neither has shot the basketball well, but Kobe Ross has continued to distribute the ball, share the sugar, moved around the hood, around the horn, and, and gotten teammates involved, and then his offense came to him. Pepperdine coming up next in terms of conference action. They're going to be hosting San Francisco on Saturday. Already put up a good performance against a team that's oh. had a great start to a year, and maybe they'll have another good showing against the Dons this weekend. Well, they definitely could in San Francisco for real. Oh! Hard foul. It's going to be free throws coming up for Pepperdine. Not a dirty play by any sense, but Glenda oh. just not giving up anything easy. Well, you love that these two teams are going after it, but McClendon going upstairs. Going up, it might have been a clean block if he didn't get the body. And Eric Cooper Jr. having a fine game tonight, knocking it down from the three-point line. A little, a little scare there on the on the on the lay-in, but you love the way these guys are competing. I, I, I mean, Sam, we've been spoiled here, and the fans here at Pepperdine, because these two teams have competed. They dipped over on floors battled for rebounds, shared the basketball, defended, done all the little things. Let's look here. Look at Eric Cooper. He's timing it. No give up. No quit in Eric Cooper. He's a Pasadena kid. You hear that again? A Pasadena kid going after it. The refs are checking at the monitor. I didn't think it was a dirty play. He uh, certainly gets him with the body, but 
like you said, if that didn't get in the way, it's a clean block. Yeah, clean block. And, you know, it just happened to land on Cooper. But, you know, if I'm a referee, I'm always looking for content, contact above the shoulders. And there was no contact above the shoulders there, or no intent or no play. Uh, that was out of the bounds of basketball. That was a basketball play. He went up to play the ball, and you said it, Sam. He got the ball. So they had actually called it a flagrant on the floor, but wanted to get a look at it. And that, that's a case where the contact looks worse than the intent of the player is, and Flaker really has to do with the intent of the player. Humble Brad coming, man. My, re my referee career is still here, man. It's still alive. I called it right. They called it a flagrant, but Hollis was right, man. My, <laughs> my referee career is still alive. So, Calvin Falk, excellent job from the referees of going to take a look at it and, and correcting the play. You know, let's say this is a tight game and that play happens. This could be the difference between winning and losing, so you appreciate the referees who have called an excellent game tonight. Cooper goes one for two. The lead is 18. And now we've got a stoppage as the shot clock had not started. Largest lead of the night. And Sam, you know, for LMU, that's how you take a common foul, right? <laughs> that's a common foul. You know, no easy bucket. So uh, McClendon, great job going after. 4.08 left. Lions. Just have not shown enough offensive firepower here to make this thing close at this point. This may seem like a little thing, but Kessler Edwards, his pick and roll defense has been ex excellent tonight. He's been shoulders to baseline on all his shows and his coverages, and his length has impacted the game. Ivan Alipiev with the pass to the corner. Three is good for Jordan Bell. I told you Jordan Bell is a player, man. Once if this kid can catch up to the speed of college basketball, he's a big time scorer. He's got a soft touch. He doesn't look like much, but he's a lot longer and a lot quicker than you'd expect. Second three of the year for Jordan Bell. Yeah, he can shoot it. He can play. The kids just got to get on the floor. Get on the shot clock. You ask, for, you ask for the point guard battle, there it is. Made the way in a 30-second shot clock violation. I think if you're Pepperdine, you take that. <laughs> yeah, it has, it, it has not been pretty. Pepperdine waves up, taking care of home. 64-49 waves. Students are supposed to arrive on campus next week. The youngsters in the greater Malibu area enjoying a good performance from their waves tonight. Renzo Romar's second run as head coach and his second run into conference play. Looking like it's going to be off to a good start as they lead LMU 64 to 49. Looking like a, a, a great start. I, I told you I am jealous watching. I never got to play for Coach Romar. He's just been a, a mentor in my ear to this day. 
putting that Romar imprint on the Pepperdine Waves. Golly. Bateman in traffic, finishes amongst three wave defenders. And these last 251, you know, you're going to see, you know, Mike Dunlap's team, there's no quit. They're going to keep competing, but. You know, for guys like James Bateman, he's got to get something going here. He's got to get some confidence going into the next game. So, you know, you love that Mike Dunlap is putting in the guys in the game that are going to compete for him. Who are going to keep playing? Who are going to keep doing the little things that he has taught? Foul went against McClendon, his second. So Cameron Edwards goes to the line. Mike, Mike Dunlop did a great job in Charlotte. You know, obviously the NBA basketball stands for not co doesn't stand for coaching security. You know, you can do a great great job and be fired or be let go. Uh, but you see his imprint really being stuck on this LMU coaching, uh, coaching excuse me coaching excuse me team, uh, 12 and two looking to be 12 and three after tonight. Uh, Unless something wild happens, but just an excellent job. I could not be more impressed by Mike Dunlop and LMU. And they've been undefeated at home this year. You can't overstate the importance of home court yeah. advantage, which in the West Coast Conference throughout non-conference play has been a big, big deal. One thing, uh, when you, when you want to win league, and that's always a goal going into the season, you have to take care of home, and you win a couple tough ones on the road that you shouldn't win. You know, you, you but home, you take care of home. You take care of your fans. You be, have a tough place to play, a tough atmosphere. So uh, hats off to Pepperdine tonight. They've done what they're supposed to do. You know, and we'll see what happens when they get over to Loyola. Coach Romar. I love him as a basketball coach even more as a person. Jody Smith still figuring things out at the guard position, improving his ball handling, but that's a, a big no-no in a trap. You never, 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 never dribble to the corners. So LMU with a three, they make it a 10-point game. Threes haven't been all that kind of LMU tonight. They're oh, three no. for 15 from long distance and they hit the fewest threes per game of anyone in the conference. Oh! <laughs> Johnny Smith. Sammy doesn't lack for effort. <laughs> Whatever's going on. This kid doesn't lack for effort. Uh, most guards would be beat on this back door, giving up a dunker lamp, and Johnny Smith going upstairs and trying to get it back. It's his fourth foul. Bateman, who just hit two free throws, will. Try and make it an 11 point contest. Bateman well traveled from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Went to North Dakota State College of Science before coming to LMU. College of Science. Mm. And that should be an offensive foul, yes. Ross got the, shook the uh, forearm up in the chest. So I, I, I rave very highly of Mike Dunlap's team and how there's no quit. They're going to keep trapping. Look at McClendon in there. Intelligent play against Kobe Ross. And Kobe got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, you know, with the, with the little push off, and McClendon sold it. And they're going to look over this one. While they do that, we're going to take a look around at opening day in the West Coast Conference. I will take one wild guess. Are you ready for it? Give it to me. Gonzaga won. St. Mary's. Oh, it's in San Francisco with the big win at St. Mary's. Dons are for real. They're coming to Pepperdine next. Santa Clara beating San Diego and BYU leading Pacific at the half in Stockton, 49 so, 37. So Gonzaga did not play, but I, I will throw out a wild guess that they will win their opener. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a go on a limb and say that Gonzaga is going to win their opener. Mark Few is going to win his opener in conference. Zag is going to open in Santa Clara on Saturday. Next up for LMU is going to be their home opener of West Coast Conference action. They'll welcome in the only team that had a losing record in well, non-conference hey, action, Portland. Santa Clara's no pushover now. And no? Portland is much improved. Those young guys are getting older, stepping into you know, not just a freshman anymore, but uh, sophomores and juniors. So uh, much improvement from the squad. They were taking a look at that last foul, see if it was a, a cylinder foul. And they 
Hasn't confirmed it was an offensive violation, so it well, will be a little ball. They really didn't need to look at that play. I could I could have told you that one. You could have told me that, but you know what? It really is in the favor of Mike Dunlap at LMU because he gets to draw the set right now out of this out of out of timeout and see if he can't make a game with this with 226 left to go. I told you how tough this team is, man. There's no quit in the Bateman stripped. Look at Johnny Smith, man. This dude is a he's a machine. Bateman, I think he might have gotten away with something yep. on the baseline, yep. and then a foul called on the lane. He absolutely got fouled. Uh, Johnny Smith fell on the floor diving, and the awareness of James Bateman to get up and get back in the play. So Bateman falls, look, he gets back up, goes upstairs. Ink is fouled. Eric Cooper Jr. takes the personal. It's his first. And now they're going to look at this one again. Bateman had gotten tangled on the floor with Jody Smith, who was on the baseline. And out of, out of the core of my eye, Looked like Smith was going down while Bateman was coming up. I'm not sure how that happened, but I think that might be what they're looking at here. It well, it hasn't been the prettiest game for James Bateman, but he's continued to work. He's continued to fight. I, you know what? I'm not quite sure what the referees are looking at. I'll be honest right now at this point, but I appreciate them looking. But we talked earlier, Sam, about right at the point how uh, this is in favor of Loyola right now because Dunlap gets to set his defense. He gets to uh, run a play ATO uh, after these fouls. And you get to instill some confidence in your team saying, look at what we did. We cut the game to 11 points. I know there's two minutes left, but let's see where we take it, fellas. You had said that one of the keys for Pepperdine was you wanted to see tempo and things go at a, a feverish pace based off their defense. If they keep stopping the game, it's hard to generate that pace. Yes, it is. You, you are absolutely right. And, you know, Pepperdine was the first to knock down shots. And what surprised me tonight and impressed me also was their pace. They grinded. This team came out and grinded, better known for their offense, the way they run and, and create turnovers. But they grinded with Loyola taking the big fella out the game. And, you know, Matisse Markinson was really ineffective due to the front of the, uh, you know, Darnell Dunn and Coach Lorenzo Romar's strategy, you know, that had not happened to Matias Markinson this year. He'd been dominating. Bateman has made six straight free throws. He's got a dozen on the night. This is a single digit deficit now for LMU. Ross, nice pass, and Edwards finishes the lane. One thing you love about Kobe Ross, he's a self-corrector. He knew he turned the ball over last time, said, get me the ball, and just goes make and makes a play for his team. Bateman missing from the top of the circle. Lead is 11. We're under two minutes to play, and Bateman will collect his fifth <laughs> foul. Smart play from Kobe Ross. We talked about he gives up the big charge earlier, pushing off, and pretty much drives into James Bateman and draws a foul. He's got to be close to five. Is that four, I would assume? Five? Oh, excellent night from Bateman tonight. Yeah. Going to take his time getting off the floor here. Quintana back 12 points from Bateman, 10 in the second half. It wasn't pretty, as you said. A lot of it coming at the line, but he did find a way to make it a single-digit game for a moment there. They did. And, and you know, Give credit to Coach Romar on the way. You know, he saw two and three bodies all night long every time he drove to the rim. And, you know, hopefully this kid realizes if he's got to work on his jump shot. He's got to uh, really be able to create because in the league, teams are not going to let you see the rim as Kobe Ross misses a free throw. Uncharacteristic like. And then head oh, fakes to three. Is the lay in. Pepperdine will just throw it up the floor. Oh, man. Waves are rolling. Done. The oh, jam from Edwards. Big time jam. That's your center throwing up a lob to your power forward. The fans are loving it. 
Quintana drills the three. It's his first points of the second half, but 11 point deficit. LMU, not a lot of choices here. They'll foul. So you see Darnell Dunn, your center, on the break, lobbing it up to yours. Power forward with the huge jam. Cameron Edwards going upstairs. Go get it, big fella. Go get it. One thing we saw at shoot around, Lorenzo Romar is very aware of how athletic his team is. He has a lot of plays that are designed to get lobs, to get Backdoor cuts, get dunks. You're just gonna rub it in, because I, I, I was supposed to play for. <laughs> you just rub it in, man. You rub it in. See Not what I'm missing out on, man. Every comment about Pepperdine present is about <laughs> Lorenzo Roma, Ryan Hollins. Oh, I've had to watch these coaches from afar, and it, 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 it is a joy uh, to see what he's been able to do in a, a short amount of time, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> with the uh, with the Pepperdine waves. And an easy transition for a new coach. When you got a point guard like Kobe Wallace. I teach him, I tell him, he executes it, they do it. And that's what you've seen tonight from the Braves. Quintana missed the three. Rebound for Ross. I don't think he's going to get to triple double, but he's got the points and assists. Playing for Edwards. He's got 13. Lead is 15 with under a minute to play. Scott missing the lay-in. And we'll go back to the waves. Scott, Scott maybe got a little flat tire there, man. He was a, if he was a little more athletic, but I mean he's got the he's got the bang for his buck tonight. Look at Kobe Ross though. I, I mean, golly. I asked Coach Romar, I said, Coach Romar, what's your press break tonight? He said, get the ball to Kobe Ross. Oh, Scott gets a block. Give, give me those. <laughs> And there's a steal on the other end for Johnny Smith. Smith. Showtime! I'll take it. I'll take the lead. That's take a six? <laughs> yeah. That's a four, man. <laughs> if that had been Andre Ball, we'd be, we'd be jumping out our seats right now. Scott padding his stats. Yeah. Gets a rebound yes, and a yeah. putback. 16 for him, but this one is going to go to the waves. LMU's going to have to wait till 2020 to win in Malibu. Oh, man. Hats off to the Pepperdine Waves for coming out and beating a good, tough, hard-nosed, gritty, well-coached, deep Loyola Marymount 12-2, now 12-3 team. And it was on the back of Kobe Ross. And one thing that's special about Kobe Ross is when you, you, you attack the rim and you move the ball, your teammates start to believe in you. And everything that you, you preach to them, is not, it's no longer lip service. They start to believe in you. They start to believe in themselves. And they do the little things to help you win games, Sam. Colby Ross, 13 points, double-digit assists, a double-double for him. First Pepperdine wave since 2000 with back-to-back -back games of 10 or more assists. He's had 25 in his last two efforts. Colby Ross is our clutch performer of the game presented by Nike. So Pepperdine starts conference play 1-0. They're 8-7 overall. LMU falls to 12-3 on the season. They'll try and pick up their first win of conference play on Saturday against Portland. For Ryan Hollins, I'm Sam Farmer saying thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. The Waves win their opener 77 to 62.